Hello, Snackers. This is Kareem Iskander. I'm a tech advocate with Cisco Learning and Certification. Hey, everyone. Matt DiNapoli. I'm a manager of developer advocacy with Cisco DevNet. Welcome to episode 51 of DevNet Snack Minute. DevNet Snack Minute is your 10-minute weekly all things DevNet, where we talk about coding, APIs, or just some cool stuff we think you might like to know. And the cool thing that we're going to talk to you about today is modern collaboration with CodeShare with our guest, John. John, do you mind introducing yourself? Hi, everybody. It's great to see you, Kareem and Matt. This is exciting for me. So by day, I guess I'm a, a senior IT integrator and planner with the Canadian House of Commons. That's the Parliament of Canada in Ottawa. And But most of you probably know me with my community and open source work, which I do on my own after hours in my little basement development here. So I'm really excited to, to be here today and to actually have you inside of my VS Code. So before we got on here, you had me join something um, in VS Code. It looks like I have some control, if not all control, but it looks like you're also controlling. So can you um, first introduce this tool that we're looking at and kind of give us a, a framework for how it's useful and, and uh, what collaboration looks like within it? Great. So absolutely, Matt, you have full control. I've given you read-write privileges. I could have given you just read privileges. And I'm actually hoping you can sign my guest book here in Markdown. We're both having colors and we can easily track. If you look on the, on the left, it will even tell you what file I'm in and the line in the file I'm in. So I don't want to go too deep too fast. But I found LiveShare quite some time ago and I've been using it in my day job, so to speak, with this new DevOps, DevNet, collaboration, pair programming, mob programming, I can have colleagues escalate tickets to me, bring me right into their VS Code in real time by just inviting me or sending me an invite when I'm available, attaching one to a calendar invite, up to 30 join and make different files, work on different files. Why is this for loop not working, right? Like we're actually sharing the code. now. Screen sharing is one thing. In this post-COVID world, we all sort of rely on screen sharing. This to me is, it's even further. This is like breaking the fourth wall where you could be in a file, Kareem could be in a file, I could be in a different file, the same file. What you'll notice is that when I go to make my commit, um, it's actually tagged you, Matt, already as a co-contributor to this get commit that we're making together automatically. So it's a lot of fun, and but it's more than fun. It's an actual business grade collaboration suite. Do you have any questions about it at a high level before I get keep going? No, I, I just I, want to point out, this isn't happening in my browser. Uh, this is actually, how I'm sharing right now, and this is actually happening in my own version of VS Code locally on my machine. Um, sorry, Kareem, I was, uh, poking around there with you while we were, while John was talking. And that was kind of funny. We were kind of stepping on each other's toes. But uh, um, yeah, no, no questions. This is this is great. Yeah, just tell us a little bit about what we're looking at and and you know how how does that help me as a developer when working with the team, especially in the in the world that we live in now where everything is hybrid. How does that come in play? Well I I really think this is a perfect post pandemic tool, let's say. We're all sort of looking for ways to connect. And I used to be able to physically go over someone's shoulder and look at code and help them out or get them out of a problem or have a meeting in a boardroom with a whiteboard. And that whole experience is now lost to us, most of us. But now I can simulate that to a degree. We can set up audio calls in VS Code or rely on our and our WebEx to, to do what we do now. I typically will have a WebEx in concert and we, we set up the, the screen sharing and the talking, but we can just code and solve problems together. So as you see, Matt is in Cleveland. If we scroll up here, Kareem is actually the first official signature. I put Danny Wade's name in. Here's something that you might not think about, but Danny Wade and I did some live streaming together. After the first week or during the planning for our first week, we said, what if we use live share and instead of trying to do this screen sharing approach, we can collaborate. And then in the second and third week, someone could actually not only watch the stream, but join and code with us. And it was incredible. 
So I get really excited because I, to me, like if you watch the, the, the Cisco create, I did a very special presentation for me and Duan yeah. about the foundation and automation. This has all of the pillars in one suite. We have an IDE in VS Code. We have Git. Git is tracking Matt's, Matt adding his name here. That's version and source controlled. It's community as well. These people, you know, there's people all over the world signing this guest book together. It's so much fun and engaging to me. So there's so many, imagine training, imagine consulting, imagine the sphere of education. It's having, I used to be a professor. If I could invite all 30 students and show them an iOS config, show them Python in a shared space. I think this is a revolutionary thing, guys. You know, the snack minute is about ideas and thinking and getting, you know, really expanding our tool set together. I, I really think in the years to come, we're all going to know and use this tool, um, you know, like anything else that we use every day, right? By the way, John, I, I watched your session at DevNet Create and it was great and, and congratulations on your uh, DevNet Creator Award. Um, you know, it's uh, <laughs> super awesome to, to have you there. And, um, one thing that I've, as we're playing and as you're talking about this, um, I'd like to get out there. How easy is it to set up what you have set up right now? And and also, um, I think it goes beyond just sharing code. I think I think I also have access. You allowed me to have access to your local servers where I could see, you know, what you've hosted on at home on your local server. So that's that's pretty cool to be able to not only see what you're coding, but also get access to your infrastructure from where I'm living. I was going to say, I noticed there's an application seems to be running uh, in this in our service right now. Does that mean it's running on my local machine? So there's a lot on Matt's screen, and we're going to take this discussion kind of to the next level now. What you're seeing now on Matt's screen is a Docker container image. Um, it's called Heimdall, and it's kind of like Roku, sort of, but it lets me... So all of those tiles that you saw are other services. And Matt, you're right, exactly. It's actually running on, so try the on-demand center, let's say. Back in VS Code, if you were to trigger one of these, click the all commands button, for example. You're actually triggering, and go back to VS Code, um, I'm sharing my terminal, and that is the, what's running on my computer right now in my Docker container. You can see it. And now to go even left, even deeper in the inception, that's not a local port. I'm connected to the DevNet sandbox right now. And the automation you've triggered is a pod ETS job that's connected through my VPN into the cloud. And then I'm present live share in your browser. And, and you'll be able to see the results of this stuff, but it's all peer to peer. If there's like a firewall or NAT in the way it will be cloud, but Matt, nothing is local on your computer. You shut VS Code, that's it. You, you go to the local host 9000, and there's nothing. If you rejoin the live share and go to port 9000, you'll get the tiles. And and I and this kind of post distributed world. We work in a global village. You guys in particular, I have someone in Cleveland and someone from San Jose in a different time zone. To me in Quebec, just outside of Ottawa, in real time, talking and sharing code and writing code and running services, it's really neat stuff, right? Like I got a big smile on my face for a reason. Now I'm so <laughs> thrilled at this. It's, it's pretty awesome, to be honest with you, that just being able to do that. And you know, now now I don't have to worry about Matt pinging me when he's stuck with his code. I can just jump into his live share and help him out. And so Which he can sleep right at night. In. Yeah, exactly. I'm never stuck on my code. I believe I'm the one that tends to help you out more often than you help me. Yeah, sure. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I, I happen to have a Docker container, but we're, we're, we're developing solutions. We're all writing code and trying to, like, I want, I want people to see Merlin and run Merlin without spending money on a cloud space or some chunk of metal in my data center or, do you know what I mean? Like, I want to be agile. And let's say you had something in Apache. Like that's what I'm showing you is Apache, right? right. You, you make a quick little web service or some solution that you want to present to a colleague. 
you just invite him into your live share now and say, okay, open up port 8080 and take a look at what I'm working on. What do you think? Imagine the, the agility and in integrating with clients, right? A client can come yeah. into your code share, launch the prototype in their browser and go, well, what about blue instead of green? Or could you move this button here or there? In, you know what I mean? Like yeah. it's, it's yeah. so, so many opportunities, right? Yeah, I, I, my mind is reeling with all the things that we could do. Um, but unfortunately, John, like, well, that's all the time we have for today. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> but we'd love to have you back to talk more about um, collaboration and automation and, and all the stuff you've been working on. Um, so, uh, but actually, I almost forgot. Before we let you go, um, this, since this is your first time here, uh, we always ask this of our, our first time guests, um, what superpower would you like to have and why? Well, as you can see, I, I'm the superhero guy. I love superheroes. And that's the hardest question. That's harder than any Python I've ever written that's going to answer that question. <laughs> but it's this guy that <laughs> Dr. Doom. And, and the reason why I picked Dr. Oh. Doom's powers is because he might be a bad guy, but he mixes magic with technology. And that's sort of what we're doing at this cutting edge of it really feels mad. There's a reason why I called it, it Merlin does. because of the speed and it feels like we're doing magical things with technology. So I got to say, Dr. Doom would be, that would be the powers that I'd love to really have in real life. Uh, you know, give or take the metal. That's, and the that's being, awesome. And the being uh, evil. And the being evil. You seem too nice to be yeah, evil. The being evil. <laughs> the being evil. Yeah. <laughs> um, John, I, you know, you got me super excited about Merlin now, and I'm interested in, in learning a little bit more. So we'll definitely have you back to talk about it. And uh, uh, for today, thank you for your time. And thank you for showing us this. This is awesome. Um, and thank you, Snackers, for joining us on this episode.